Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Tektronics. PAL Television Generator TSG271. And I am in PAL country. So I'm quite happy. <laughs> it looks like I can, uh, I can actually test this because I got a PAL screen so i should be able to see that you can do some color bars and some different uh features like that it's not what is that a secret select test signal so this is probably okay interesting and we got a little information here calibration well, it's a due date 01. Okay, so it was what? 23 years of storage. And I got a good. This is a good one. Calibration. Um, those stickers. That means uh, nobody was in here. And we got three of these and they are all intact. So that is good news. But this one scares me a little bit. So there was a some sort of a note here. This is probably something with defect. <laughs> you never know. If we look at the back, we find a lot of BNC connectors. Look at that. So this is definitely Pro TV Studio. So there's this... Um, so it's synchronizing its output to TV station. Um, there's a black TV signal that is sent around to all the different units. And they will, of course, uh, all be synced to that signal. Audio tone option. Well, well, well. And there's an on-off switch is on the back. We've got this uh, click on hold here for the connector so that's quite nice look at the way that you do a line voltage setting so there's a screw you move from one hole to another hole and there's probably a little switch in here i mean that is uh, quite nicely done it is absolutely beautifully designed <laughs> of course i don't know why should i be surprised this is a tektronics i mean so of course it is super nicely made and it's also broadcast tv station uh, equipment so of course they expect this to be very very expensive Let's start with the power supply and see how beautiful it's made. I'm absolutely impressed. Look at all those capacitors. And I believe we got some after regulation stages here to smooth out everything from the switch mode, the capacitors, filters, and then after regulators and then this nice clean DC goes to all this digital stuff but also some of the voltages they go this way and down to all the analog all the analog output stage that generates the TV images if we look at the digital board all the chips with labels, that's of course programmable ICs, that many. So they contain configuration software set up for all sorts of stuff. All the chip this size here, uh, that will be some memory, but all these, that's uh, programmable chips like counters and gate arrays, uh, PAL peels and uh, yeah, chips like that. That will be EEPROMs containing 8-bit software or um, image graphics can also be that. That one is your 
brain of the unit, the Z80 CPU. And this chip is from 96. If you are into Z80, I recommend uh, you go to a website called z80.info. Absolutely fantastic web page that will show you all the fantastic details uh, about the Z80 family. Uh, I believe that some of the chips, you can see the software here is from 87. So that uh, tells me that some of the software was uh, of course that old and uh, they didn't change the software in those chips. I also see uh, other uh, codes like, see, 93 on that one, 92 on that one. See, this one is directly connected to the CPU. And that will be memory for that CPU. So here is our program. We got all sorts of timer chips and some more custom specialized chips. I'm a little bit worried about the two screws here. See, they're a little bit loose. In this area here, we find the reference clock oscillator. I believe this is, is isolated from the environment. There's maybe a little heater in there. This top screw here is for adjustment. And there was a sticker on the top hiding this screw. So this of course tells me that they are using this clock for reference and stability for the whole TV station uh, video signals. So they are super nice and stable. And this is of course also what this uh, unit is doing. We got some uh, nifty analog chips right here. I had the idea we were only going to see one um, of these, but that is uh, not the case. Some more custom chips from Sony. Yeah, but we see no reason for us not to try and power this up. So that is what I'm going to do. <laughs> they want a big fan and they don't have that much height. And we also got holes all the way down here on the back. And then air goes this way. I think that is so cute. So let's try and power it up and see if it... Uh works i don't know if i even connected the output correctly to my scope but we will see what happens that will be mains input and it's not using any power so far so good at least we got some something it's using 50 watts so i'm a little bit worried about why is this one lid we got some it says color bars select test signal and what have we got here well well i want to go and get a um, monitor and see if we got any picture on this one i just adjusted my scope a little bit and uh Obviously, you can recognize this uh, pattern here. This is a color bar. So we see six different colors. So there's a white and there's a black. And then we have six colors here in the, in the middle. What we see here is a color burst. That is the frequency uh, your TV screen will lock to and generate all the colors from the faces. You can see they are funny uh, with the faces right there. And that is a synchronization output from the unit. So, well, it looks like it's working. Got some different uh, features here. I can probably see 100% bar so, or 75. Got some, oh, this one's just a white pulse. Oh, and that will be the grid. So, that'll be that grid. Got some lines and a. See, you can even see the picture here, more or less. Right. This one looks a little bit like that. Got 
Oh, that is a cool signal. Look at that. And that is the classic ramp. Flat field. Other signals. Oh, we can go into all sorts of funky other signals. Of course, the unit works absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's a little bit annoying with that fan. It does indeed make a lot of noise, but of course it's because it's open like that and it blows me directly in my face. But here we see the color bars. Every, um, every button here got a lot of different features. See, if I just push the color bars like that, every time I push it, whoops, see, it's doing some different uh, color bars with this and color bars with that. And then back here, we can, um, yeah, that is just a 100% See, got some different, that one, nope, that one is only like that, quite a lot of uh, different test modes for whatever kind of stuff you want to adjust for. Yeah, okay. And then we colors. I must admit that my um, my LCD screen there is not super nice when it comes to linearity and handling different brightnesses and different colors and all that. It is definitely not a good good reference screen for anything like that. You can see all the white colors there. They just saturate and then you see almost no difference in any of these. And that's because it's adjusted wrong. See, this one should be in the middle of the screen, right? And you should see all the different le levels with more or less the same kind of step. <laughs> That's far from what I see here, right? Hmm. Yeah, we can do all sorts of funky um, things with this machine. And it's using 49 watts and everything I touch is like burning burning hot it's uh, it's amazing but of course this is not CMOS it's all TTL and MOS circuits from the 80s start 90s so that is why it's just using a lot of power and I think that will be the digital to analog converters. And I can't even touch them. They're that warm. And this one too. Ay, ay, ay. So. <laughs> that is how it is. Oh, yeah. See this entire front panel with all the different uh, switches and stuff like that. Some LEDs. There is, of course, a thin circuit board in here and it goes in this oh, let me turn this off it's annoying look at all those feed through filters and that is so all the nasty noise from the internal parts is not going outside of the metal cabinet and becomes an antenna out here so that is of course important but uh, yeah I really think that I was lucky to get something that works. There's only one little thing I want, and that is to investigate this uh, oscillator. I hope I can just unplug it and have a look inside. See, that is what we're talking about. A really nice isolated case. And here you go. There is a heater. And this one here is burning burning hot I can't no 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 I cannot touch that one and this whole unit here is probably in a little socket so I can ay 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 it's too warm but well, that is one nice oscillator see it's from 97 and a handwritten serial number 9 so I could of course just unscrew this still 
very warm but now it cooled down a little bit I really want to have a look inside this it looks like that is possible see the circuit board with the crystal and uh, there's probably a little Cena diode in TC resistor right there for temperature so there's a voltage for this and a little transistor or oscillator is probably there, right? And uh, this was like this. And then one screw there and another one here. So, But there's one thing that worries me a little bit. See, when I get this up. I don't know if you can see what I see. But what the heck is that? Really? <laughs> what the heck is that? This is a little cut from this. So when they hand solder this, they cut this. And then shooting, bing, flying. And nobody saw it. So it's been lying there for all those years and almost touched one of the pins of the crystal. That is a quality issue. And unfortunately, the crystal here is 17.734 and something more. And they say it's from 96, week 48. I was hoping to find a 10 megahertz crystal here. Because then I know the crystal and the heater and the temperature sensors and everything is like matched. Because this is a really nice case to do a little frequency reference. But now I'll just put it all back together and uh, reassemble the whole unit without the little pin cut. That's quite nice. I just looked in some of my set 80s looking for some of the old and funky... Uh, once I got, and I found the oldest I had from 78. I tried to plug that one in, and I got color bars, but I got no user interface. <laughs> so I bet it's not working. But I think what they are using here is a 6 megahertz version, and I think the good old one is only as specified for 4 megahertz. So I think that explains why it's not working. I just took another one and of course now I got a working interface so that's perfectly fine. This one I previously tested to run at uh, 4 megahertz but I think this thing here runs at 6 megahertz. Why would they put in a 6 megahertz uh, chip? But I can of course easily test that. So of course I went to set 80.info find the Psylocke datasheet, the original one and uh, yes, we can see it is pin 6, that is the clock signal. And they're running a little bit on the maximum, 5.911. So they're not running it at 6 megahertz. Anyways, I think that is uh, more or less all I could show you inside this uh, unit that is probably a little bit over engineered with all those funky programmable chips and whatnot but think about it this is not just a pattern generator but it's also a gen lock and a reference frequency um, generator for the entire tv station and it can do all the fancy lock and adjust and all that things so that is why we need all those chips to uh, generate the super high resolution uh, clock. So we got PLLs and all the locks and all that stuff uh, done here. And then we got a super fantastic analog output and board here with all the, yeah, everything is just made as fancy and good as you can possibly do it. So thank you very much for watching i hope you had a little bit of fun and i really hope to see you soon again bye bye